To watch these important lessons, subscribe to DP Education's YouTube channel right now. Click on the bell icon to stay updated on the latest lessons. Sri Lanka's largest free online school, DP Education. Hello, my dear students. Welcome to today's lesson. So now I'm going to discuss with you all the process taking place during rusting. Now in the previous chapter, we discussed the factors that are essential for rusting. So there we discussed three different practicals where you were able to understand that air is essential for rusting and the component of air that is needed for rusting is oxygen and thereafter we understood that water is essential for rusting. So water vapor that is present in air is used for rusting or water itself can be used for rusting. It is essential. So both oxygen and water are essential for rusting. So when there is iron in the presence of oxygen and water, it will undergo rusting. And this rusting is also an electrochemical process. So when we say electrochemical process, it has to involve both anodic and cathodic reactions, that is oxidation and reduction reactions. That is what we are going to understand now. So the process taking place during rusting. Now iron atoms form positive ions. Iron atoms form positive ions by losing electrons. This means that they get oxidized. It can be represented by an equation as follows. So we are going to write the equation. Now we have the iron solid. It becomes Fe2 plus aqueous by losing two electrons. This is Fe2 plus ions. It is called ferrous ions. Now you all know students, iron has two different cations or positive ions. Fe2 plus is ferrous, Fe3 plus is ferric. So initially if it, it is Fe2 plus ions that form during the oxidation reaction. This is the oxidation half reaction. Then what happens is metal atoms oxidize as above only when there is another species which can accept electrons. So when these metals lose electrons, there should be some other species that can take up electrons. So in the previous chapter, we discussed that both oxygen and water are essential for rusting. So here the species that is going to take up electrons is both oxygen and water together. So if we write that reaction, when oxygen gas when oxygen gas in the atmosphere and water or water vapor are together, they get reduced accepting electrons as indicated below. So if we write that equation, there we will have two water molecules, H2O liquid plus oxygen, we will take it as gas, H2O liquid and oxygen gas they take up four electrons, four OH minus aqueous. So two water molecules, two H2O liquid plus O2 gas with four electrons forms four hydroxide ions, four OH minus ions. So those are the two reactions. Here you can see Fe solid loses electrons forming Fe2 plus aqueous. Water plus oxygen take up electrons and form hydroxide ions. So this is oxidation, this is reduction. Now I will move on to the next slide and continue with this explanation. Accordingly, the half reactions occurring when iron rust can be given as follows. So the two half reactions that we wrote before. What are the half reactions? First one, we are Fe solid becomes Fe2 plus aqueous losing two electrons. And two water liquid plus O2 gas 
plus 4 electrons giving rise to 4 OH minus A cos. So those are the two reactions. First one is the oxidation reaction and this is the reduction reaction. In the oxidation reaction, you all can see students, when iron loses electrons, there are only two electrons lost. But here in the reduction, where water and oxygen take up electrons, there are four electrons. And those are the half equations. So if you want to balance and write the overall cell equation, what do you need to do? You need to have equal number of electrons. So to get the equal number of electrons, we need to multiply this by 2. Then only this will become 4 electrons. So the number of electrons lost by reactions, 1 should be balanced by the number of electrons gained in reaction 2. So what is lost from here should be equal to this. Therefore, we need to multiply the first equation. So if I do that, here you can see 1 into 2, that will give you the equation as 2Fe solid giving rise to 2Fe2 plus aqueous plus 4 electrons. I will number that as 3. So we have the second equation and the third equation. Then if we add 2 plus 3, what will you get? 2 Fe solid plus 2 H2O liquid plus O2 gas plus 4 electrons giving rise to 2 Fe2 plus aqueous plus 4 OH minus aqueous and 4 electrons. So here, what will happen to the number of electrons? Here in this equation also we have 4 electrons. Here also 4 electrons on either side of the arrow. So they get cancelled off. Then finally, what is the equation you all get? Finally, we get the equation as 2Fe solid plus 2H2O liquid plus O2 gas giving rise to 2 Fe2 plus aqueous plus 4 OH minus aqueous. Now if we combine these two, Fe2 plus and OH minus, here you can say 2 into 2 plus 4 plus, here 4 into minus 4 minus. So they can combine together forming Fe OH twice. Because Fe is 2 plus, OH is minus, so it becomes FeOH twice, ferrous oxide. So that is the overall change that is taking place. So here, this is what we wrote before, iron undergoing oxidation, water and oxygen undergoing reduction forming hydroxide ions. Then to balance the electrons, we'll multiply the first equation by 2, so that becomes 4 electrons. Then if you add 2 and 3, you get this equation where you have 4 electrons on either side of the arrow. You cancel that off. Then we finally get this equation where FeOH twice is formed. So this is a very important reaction. You all have to remember this student. Have to remember this equation. Where FeOH twice is formed. But this ferrous 
hydroxide FeOH twice ferrous hydroxide does not remain as it is it gets oxidized further forming ferric oxide that is what we call as rust ferric oxide that is hydrated ferric oxide is what we call as rust so the reaction does not stop here we will continue that in the next slide as well therefore it is clear that what occurs in rusting also is an electrochemical process similar to what you studied in the sub unit so here you can remember it is also an electrochemical process it can be stated that reaction 1 is the anodic reaction because oxidation occurs and reaction 2 is the cathodic reaction because reduction occurs so in the previous slide like i told you all if you go back you can see these students here we, you can see this is the oxidation and this is reduction so i will include those names as well this is oxidation this is reduction so oxidation means anodic reaction anode and here this is going to be the cathodic reaction cathode so both reactions oxidation and reduction then FeOH twice formed above further reacts with air to form hydrated ferric oxide so i told you all this hydrated ferric oxide that has a formula like this feoh2 is what formed before so if we look at that reaction here you can see four feoh twice solid plus O2 gas gives rise to 2 Fe2O3 dot H2O. Fe2O3 is what we call as ferric oxide. That is hydrated ferric oxide because there is water here. We write it as Fe2O3 that is ferric oxide dot h2o so that is hydrated you are familiar with anhydrous hydrated salt so here ferric oxide is hydrated and that is what we call as rust is that clear student so 2feoh twice solid plus o2 gas forms 2fe2o3 dot h2o that is also solid and that is what we call as rust it is the reddish brown substance is that clear so you have to remember students water and oxygen together take up electrons and undergoes reduction so therefore it is the cathodic reaction and when they are combined together there is feoh twice formed but that gets further oxidized like this feoh twice plus oxygen giving rise to 2 Fe2O3 dot H2O that is hydrated ferric oxide that is rust but normally we don't know the number of water molecules that are hydrated with the that are present with the ferric oxide so because of that what we do is we write the chemical formula as Fe2 O3 dot X H2O Fe2O3 dot X H2O we use the letter X because we don't know the exact number of water molecules that are present with ferric oxide so that is the correct formula or the final formula or the formula that better represents rust now here also what we get is rust but since we don't know the number of water molecules when you use the x 
it refers to any number of water molecules. So you all have to keep that in mind. So these are equations that you have to remember students in relation to rusting of iron. Hydrated ferric oxide is reddish brown in color. So that is rust. As the number of water molecules combining with ferric oxide during hydration may vary. The formula of rust can be more appropriately given as Fe2O3 dot XH2O. So that is what I showed you all before. Perhaps you would have observed that if a knife used to cut a lime was left unwashed for about a day, the part of the blade smeared with lime juice becomes rusty. Let us do the following activity to find out how acidity affects rusty. So we are moving on to a different topic or something related to rusting but another factor that can affect rusting. So this is an observation. Now sometimes we use knives to cut lime or range something that is acidic and if you don't wash it, if you leave it for one or two days, you will see the blade part where, you, where there was lime juice will be rusted. So there you all know the lime juice is acidic. So there could be an effect of acid on rusting. That is what we are trying to understand now. So in the next slide, I will discuss the activity with you all. Activity examining how acids affect rusting. So for that we need these materials. Here you can see boiling tubes. We need boiling tubes. Then we need water, the normal water. Then we need lime juice. Then here we have hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid. And to observe rusting, we will need iron nails. We will also need iron nails. Now you can remember students when we discussed this before also when we were discussing activities related to rusting. I told you all the commercially available iron nails, they have a zinc coating. So what do we do? We soak the iron nails in hydrochloric acid for 10 minutes. Then you wash it well with water, dry it and we can use it because the zinc coating will be removed by hydrochloric acid. So now we have clean iron nails. Then what we do is we take three boiling tubes. Into one we take water, another one lime juice, another one we take hydrochloric acid because both lime juice and hydrochloric acids, they are acids. And you all know lime juice is a weak acid. Whereas hydrochloric acid is a strong acid. But both are acids. So we will see whether both of them affect rusting. And to compare that we have only water. So let's look at the method again. Here we have three boiling tubes A, B and C. Into all three we have iron nails and we have the different solution. So here it is cold water or normal water or you can just write it as water then it is lime juice and here dilute hydrochloric acid dilute hydrochloric acid so like i told you this is how we are going to do the activity Put an iron nail each to three boiling tubes. Add ordinary cold water to the first boiling tube. So ordinary cold water. Water mixed with lime juice. So then we have water mixed with lime juice to the second and water mixed with dilute hydrochloric acid to the third. 
allowed to stand for about one day and observe. Record your observation. So again a very simple activity. I am sure you all have understood the procedure. Three boiling tubes with similar iron nails, clean iron nails. Then to one ordinary cold water, the other one lime juice mixed with cold water and the third one C dilute hydrochloric acid mixed with cold water. Then we leave it to stand for one day and then we observe the changes taking place. So now you have understood the activity students. Let's go to the lab and do the activity now. Okay students. So now we are going to do this activity to examine how acids affect rusty. So to do the activity, so here I have three clean iron nails uh, which are similar in size and shape. You can see that. So like we did before, if you feel that this is coated with zinc, what we do is what we buy from the shops, they are usually coated with zinc. So what we will do is we will have to just soak it in acid for 10 minutes then you have to wash it well and dry it and you need to have clean iron nails that's the main thing it has to be clean iron nails then i have three test tubes here i have labeled them you can see this is labeled as water the first one labeled as water so into this test tube i'll be taking normal cold water then here the second one you can see i have labeled this as lime juice so into this i'll be taking water normal cold water with that i'll be adding a small amount of lime juice you all know lime juice is acidic but the acidity of lime juice is less compared to this this is dilute hydrochloric acid so here i'm going to take dilute hydrochloric acid you all are familiar with strong acids and weak acid students. Dilute hydrochloric acid is a strong acid whereas this lime juice which has acetic acid is a weak acid. So then I have the three solutions or the liquids here. This is water, this normal cold water. Then I have lime juice here and hydrochloric acid there. So what I will do is I will take water into the first tube. Then I'll take water and add a small amount of acid there. And into this water with hydrochloric acid. Take more water. Here it's going to be only water. And we will add hydrochloric acid. So this is only cold water. Then this one water with lime juice and the third tube water with hydrochloric acid. Into all three I am going to Put one iron clean iron nail each. We have prepared the setup. We have to let this to stand for one day. So with water, lime juice and acid, we have to stand it for one day and then we will observe what will happen. So to observe this, I have already prepared a setup yesterday. I will show you all the observation of that particular setup now. Okay students, so this is the activity I prepared yesterday. Now you look at the observation. This is with only water, only cold water iron nail. You can see the iron nail has rusted and you can see a change in the color of water as well because the rust dissolves in water you can see it as a light brownish color then i have the next tube this is with lime juice so here you can see 
the iron nail has rusted more compared to the first one. And here also you can see there is rust deposited at the bottom of the test tube. Can you all see that clearly? Then the third tube where I have taken water with hydrochloric acid. Can you see the amount of rusting there? Look at it clearly. The solution is way more darker in color and also you can see that the iron nail has rusted a lot. So if we compare all three, if we compare the three test tubes, can you see that? With water, there is a certain amount of rusting. Then with lime juice, there is little bit more rusting. And with hydrochloric acid, the amount of rusting is high. Is that clear to you all? So from that, what can we conclude students? Now just normal water, there are other factors, oxygen and water. So there is rusting taking place. But when we add lime juice, which has acid in it, a weak acid. So the amount of acidity is less. There the rusting was more. So that means lime juice has increased the rate of rusting. If you take the dilute hydrochloric acid, there the rusting is high. HCl is a strong acid. So the amount of acidity is very high and the rusting is also high. So that means acids accelerate rusting. Okay students, so did you all observe the changes clearly? I am sure you all did. So we had three boiling tubes, one with ordinary cold water, the other one with cold water mixed with lime juice and the third one cold water with a small amount of dilute hydrochloric acid. What happened to rusting? You were able to see in all three test tubes there was rusting because they had all the factors water and oxygen. But in the first test tube where we took ordinary cold water, the rusting was less. But in the other two boiling tubes where we had lime juice mixed with water and hydrochloric acid mixed with water, there was more rusting. And there also you were able to observe that with hydrochloric acid, the amount of rusting was even a little bit more. So that was your observation. If we write the observations here, rusting of iron was less with ordinary cold water but was more with lime juice added to water water and dilute HCl added to water. So from this what can we conclude? Now from this we can conclude and say that both lime juice and HCl both are acidic and in the presence of acid, the rusting was more. So we can say acids accelerate the rate of rusting or acids increase the rate of rusting. So that is what you need to understand here. The conclusion, acids increase the rate of rusting or you can say acids accelerate rusting. Is that clear to you also? So that is one factor that affects rusting. 
acids increase the weight of plastic. So with that, I'll move on to the next slide. Now this is an observation or something that you all are familiar with. Have you heard that the items made from iron used in houses in coastal areas rust faster compared to the iron object used in other areas? What are coastal areas? Areas closer to the sea. So from the sea, we get the sea breeze. Now the sea and the sea breeze now, sea water is rich in what? Sea water has lot of salts. You all know sodium chloride is one of the main salts present in sea water. So, because of that, the sea breeze is also salty. You might have observed that. Sometimes buildings, houses, very close to the sea, when you touch the surfaces also, you get that sticky moisture. When you touch it, you feel it, it is sticky. Don't go to taste it, it can be contaminated. But if it's clean, then you will know it tastes salty. Because there is a lot of salt in the breeze. So this is another observation. Iron objects in the houses near coastal areas. They rust more compared to the same object in another house in other in another area so what could be the reason it could be this the salt so we will need to understand and confirm whether salt increases rusting or not so there is the observation because iron objects near coastal areas near the sea areas rust faster and the sea breeze due to the High salt concentration in sea water, sea breeze is also salty. So that is what we are trying to understand next. You can see activity investigating the effect of salt that is sodium chloride on rusting. So to do that these are the materials required. You can see iron nails, iron nails. We need boiling tubes or test tubes, tubes or even test tubes can be used. Here because we are not going to heat anything so we can also use test tubes then salt. Salt that is sodium chloride. So what can we do? We need to clean the iron nails first. Soak it in hydrochloric acid for 10 minutes to remove the zinc coating. Then you have the clean iron nails. After that we wash it and get the clean iron nails. Then you take two test tubes. Into both we take equal amounts of water. Into one you add a small amount of sodium chloride. Then to both the test tubes we put the clean iron nails. And we will need to stand it for a day and then we need to observe. So that is the procedure of this activity, the method. So we will discuss that in the next slide. Here you can see again test tubes A and B. So here normal, normal water. Here we can see salt solution. Salt solution. So this is what we are going to do here. Clean two iron nails. So that I told you all. Clean two iron nails. You all know what to do. Soak it in hydrochloric acid for 10 minutes. Then wash it well with water. Put the two nails separately to the two boiling tubes. So here we are using boiling tubes. Like I said. We are not going to boil anything so to give more space you can use the boiling tube or you can use test tube and into one of them add water mixed with some sodium chloride and to the other tube add ordinary cold water. So this is normal water or ordinary cold water that is salt solution. Allow to stand for about a day and observe. Record your observation. So this is also something that you can understand clearly. So let's go to the lab and do the activity now. 
Okay, students. So now I'm going to do this activity in order to observe the effect of salt on rusting. So as a salt, I'm going to use sodium chloride. And to do the activity, I have two clean iron nails here. And you are familiar with this procedure, students. If we buy iron nails from the shop, if it is a commercially available iron nail, usually it is coated with zinc. So to remove that zinc layer, what we do is we soak it in hydrochloric acid for about 10 minutes. And then you have to wash it with water and then you have to dry it. So I basically have the clean iron nails here and we have to make sure there is no rust on the iron nail and they have to be of equal size and shape as well. So that is one material. Then I have two test tubes here. I have labeled one as water because I'll be taking cold water into this and to the second test tube we will be taking sodium chloride mixed with water. So that is this test tube. So here I have two beakers, one with water and the other one with sodium chloride solution. So I'm going to take water into the first test tube. And to the second one, sodium chloride solution. If we take almost equal amount of solutions, it would be better. So, right. So, then we have to put the iron nails into both the test tubes. And we need to leave this set up for one day. We have to stand it for one day to see the observation. So one with water, normal cold water inside that an iron nail and the second tube containing sodium chloride solution and in that also a clean iron nail. So to show you all the observation, I already prepared a similar setup yesterday. So I will show you all the outcome of that setup. Okay, students. So now we will look at the activity that I prepared yesterday, the same setup. So one water, cold, normal cold water with an iron nail in it and the other one sodium chloride solution with an iron nail in it. Now look at the first test tube with water, iron nail and water. Can you all see that the iron nail has rusted? This is in one day you can see. The nail has rusted and you can see the slight color change in water as well because of the rust. If we compare this with the second test tube, the one that has sodium chloride solution, can you all see the difference? Now in the solution that is sodium chloride solution, the amount of rusting is comparatively high. I am sure you all can observe that clearly. So from these two observations, now there is water and there is oxygen. So both nails have rusted, but here it's only water. And in the second test tube, there is sodium chloride, that is salt. And in the presence of salt, the rate of rusting is very high. So from that, we can conclude and say that the salt accelerates rusting or the presence of salt increases rusting. I'm sure you all can understand that. Okay, students. So did you all see the observation clearly? I'm sure you all did. So you were able to see that the iron nails in both the boiling tubes rusted, but the iron nail in the boiling tube containing salt solution rusted more. So from that, what can we conclude? We can say that salt accelerates rusting or salt increases the rate of rusting. So the observation and the conclusion, iron nails rust 
nail in the salt solution rusted more so from that we can conclude and say salt that is sodium chloride increases the rate of rusting salt that is sodium chloride increases the rate of rusting i'm sure you all can understand that sir so with that i will move on to the next slide here again we do another activity to examine how bases affect rusting so activity examining how bases affect rusting because we saw the effect of acids effect of salt now we will try and understand what or how bases affect rusting to do that we need these materials again clean iron nails so like i told you all like we discussed before if it is the commercially purchased iron nails it will be coated with zinc so you need to soak them in dilute hydrochloric acid for about 10 minutes and then you need to wash it well with water and then you can use them for the activity we need boiling tubes boiling tubes we need normal water and sodium hydroxide solution sodium hydroxide solution or we can if we have only the sodium hydroxide pellets we can dissolve it in water and get the solution in addition to that we will need normal cold water as well so those are the materials needed to do the activity again what we will do is we will take two iron nails into two boiling tubes and into one we put we add normal cold water into the other one we add the very dilute solution of sodium hydroxide of the same volume then we stand it for some for a day and we observe what happens so i'll discuss the method again with you all here you can see two boiling tubes to be two iron nails one ordinary cold water the other one sodium hydroxide solution and that also very dilute solution so this is what we will be doing put the two clean nails to the boiling tube separately add equal volumes of so here you have to remember equal volumes of ordinary cold water to one tube and sodium hydroxide solution to the other tube allow to stand for about a day and observe so again this is also a very simple procedure so let's go to the lab and do this activity now okay students so now i am going to do this activity in order to observe the effect of bases on rusting so so far we have looked at the effect of acids and salts now the effect of bases on rusting so here i have two clean iron nails you can have a look at the iron nails here you can see they are clean and are, are, are almost the same size similar in size and shape and you all know if we are buying the commercially bought iron nails usually are coated with zinc so to remove that zinc coating we soak the iron nails in dilute hydrochloric acid for about 10 minutes and then you have to wash them off clearly very cleanly and dry them so i have very clean iron nails here then i have two test tubes 
I have labeled one as water, the other one is labeled as NaOH, sodium hydroxide. So you all know sodium hydroxide is a strong base. And here I have water, normal water and sodium hydroxide solution. So this is what we need to do. We need to take the two liquids, water into one test tube and sodium hydroxide solution into the second test tube. Almost equal, we don't have to measure the volumes but almost equal volumes and then into both I have to put the clean iron nails. So into water and into the NaOH solution. So I have to leave this setup to stand for one day. Now that I have prepared the setup here, but yesterday I already prepared another setup so that I can show you all the observation. I will show you all that observation now. Okay students, so now here I have the observation, the same setup prepared yesterday. Now here you can see water with a clean iron nail. I put a clean iron nail in first and NaOH solution with an iron nail. Now you all can have, the look, have a look at the observation. Now look at this test tube with water and iron nail. Can you all see the small amount of rusting that has taken place there? You can observe the rust on the iron nail as well as the color of the water. It has become slightly brownish in color. So that means there has been rusting. Now we will compare this with this second one. Look at this tube. NaOH solution and look at the iron nail. Can you see any rusting? Do you see rusting? No, the solution is also clear and the iron nail is also still clean. There has been no rusting. You can compare and look at both of those as well. In water, there has been rusting. In sodium hydroxide solution, there is no rusting at all. So, what can you understand from these two observations? Now both iron nails were similar, they both have air and one is in water, the other one is in sodium hydroxide solution. In water there is rusting, but when there is sodium hydroxide which is a base, it prevents rusting or we can say it inhibits or decreases the rate of rusting. In the second tube there is no rusting. So that means sodium hydroxide has prevented the occurrence of rusting. So bases reduce the rate of rusting. That is the conclusion of this activity. Okay students, so what did you all see during the activity? You were able to see that the iron nail that was put into normal cold water was rusted but the iron nail that was inside sodium hydroxide solution did not rust. So from that observation, what can you understand? Sodium hydroxide is a base and a strong base for that matter. It slows down the rate of rusting or it reduces the rate of rusting. That is why the nail that was inside sodium hydroxide solution did not rust. So that is how bases affect rusting. So we have to write the observation and the conclusion. Iron nail in ordinary water, water was Rusted. Nail or iron nail in sodium hydroxide solution solution did not rust. So from that 
we can conclude and say bases reduce the rate of rusting so i am sure you all can understand that student so in this chapter we looked at the reactions taking place during rusting so you all were able to understand that iron undergoes oxidation forming fe2 plus ions at the same time water and oxygen react together undergo react reduction and form oh minus ions when both of them combine we get feoh twice but that further oxidizes in air that is with oxygen and forms ferric oxide that is hydrated ferric oxide and the formula for rust is fe2o3.xh2o the reason why you, we use it as xh2o is that we don't know the number of water molecules that are present in rust because it is hydrated ferric oxide then we discuss these three activities where we saw the different factors now from there you understood that both acids and salts accelerate rusting but bases reduce the rate of rusting so with that students i am going to end this chapter and in the next chapter i will discuss the way or method that is used to methods that are used to prevent rusting to watch these important lessons subscribe to dp education's youtube channel right now click on the bell icon to stay updated on the latest lessons sri lanka's largest free online school dp education